Hello everyone and welcome back to TZ Code. So today we are going to learn about debugging in Visual Studio. We will see what is debugging, how we can do it, how we can identify the errors present in the code. So let's get started. So these are the things that you are going to learn from this video. So we will learn what exactly is debugging, what is a breakpoint, how to set up a breakpoint, what are the different windows, what are different things that we can do while debugging the code, what are the various shortcuts, how we can simplify our debugging process. That's all we are going to cover in this video. So first of all, what exactly is debugging? So debugging is a process in which we go through the execution of the code at runtime and evaluate whether the written code is working as expected or not. By using this process, we can actually judge out what is the problem area, what is not going right, that we can judge out using debugging. So to start off debugging, the very basic thing we need is a breakpoint. And breakpoint is nothing but just a line of code from which we want to break the execution and continue our debugging process. So when we set up a breakpoint inside Visual Studio, at runtime whenever that particular line of code is executed, the execution breaks at that particular point and then from there on you can debug the code. You can go through the code line by line, you can check what values are passed, what is the variable value, what is going on in that function that you can see using debugging. So let's go to Visual Studio and see how debugging works. So here I have created an MVC project, a basic project of MVC. Now in the code I have this controller and in this controller I have these actions. Now I have created a small method just to show you the debugging. Now first let's see how we can set up a breakpoint. I have to first choose the line on which I have to break the execution. Suppose for this particular line I want to set up a breakpoint. Now just in front of this, if I click here, it will set up a breakpoint for me. This red dot shows that it is a breakpoint. If I click it again, the breakpoint will be removed. So for now, if I set a breakpoint over here, now I'm going to run this application. So either I'm going to press this particular button, which is which runs the application, or if I have my application set up on IIS, I can attach it to the worker process, that is W3P, from this window and just click on attach, then I'm good to go. So for now, I'm just clicking on this particular button to run my application and we will notice that our breakpoint will be hit over here when the execution reaches to this particular line. So let's see. Now as you can see that when I run the application, the page starts loading and then when the execution reaches to this particular line, the breakpoint is hit. Now at this particular point, you can check the value of this variable. You can change the value as well. So you can do everything over here. So let's first see how we can do line by line execution of this code. We have these icons for this purpose. So out of these icons, this one is step over. This button brings the yellow line to the next line of code. If I press this. So this is the line that will be executed now. If I press it again, then it will reach to another line. So that's how I can execute my code line by line. This particular function has a shortcut as well, F10. Then there are other shortcuts as well. I will go through all of them one by one. Now let me show you first the context menu we have here for debugging. Now here we have this particular feature that is set next statement. By using this, you can set a line of code to be executed next. So here if my execution is on this line and I want my execution to be on this line, I can right click on this line and click on this set next statement. Now my execution reaches back to this particular line of code. Similarly, if I want to do this, that's how I can alter the execution of the code. Now there's another thing. If I set this as next statement and I put my cursor over here. Now if I click on this run to cursor, it executes all the line of code that is present between the current execution and the line at which my cursor was. So if my cursor was on this particular line, so from this line of code, it will learn all the lines that are between my cursor position and the current executing line. So if I press this, now all the code that is between this line and this line has been executed. Now let's set this line as the next statement. Now I showed you this step over function. Then there's another button that says step into. 
This is useful when we want to go inside the execution of a particular line. So for this line, if I set it to next statement, now if I click on this button, that is tab into, it will take me inside this particular method. See, it took me over here. If I had clicked this button, it would have taken me over here. But since I click this button, that is tab into, it took me into this particular function. And here I am. Now, if I click this, step over, it is taking me over here, which is the next line of execution. Also, there is this button that says step out. Once you click it, it will take you out of this function execution. So now I'm clicking it. It has taken me out of this execution. But while taking me out of this execution, it has executed all the lines of code present over here and has reached to this line. So when I click on this, step over, it will reach to this particular line. So that's how these buttons work. Now there is this button which execute all the code present in the line of execution until another breakpoint comes up. So here as we don't have any other breakpoint, when I click on this, it will execute all the code and it will render the web page. Now here you can see that there are shortcut keys like for step into this is F11, for step over 10 and for step out it's shift plus F11. You can remember these to make your debugging easier. Now let's see things that we can do with a breakpoint. I'm just going to stop debugging. Here for this breakpoint, we have different options. We can delete it. If you click on this, the breakpoint will be removed. Or if you click on this, disable breakpoint. Now it will not be hit when you run the application, but it will be still present. So you can enable it back again whenever you need it. Now there's condition and hit count, which you will be using very often. So I'm going to show the example of these two for another breakpoint. Let's set up a breakpoint over here. This is a for loop. Now I'm going to create a condition for it. I'm creating a condition. And when this condition is true, the breakpoint will be hit. So now the breakpoint will only hit when the value of i is equal to 2. Otherwise, it will not be hit. So I'm going to run this application again. Now here you can see that the value of i is equal to 2 and the breakpoint is hit. This is because we have placed in condition for this breakpoint, otherwise the breakpoint will not be hit. Now there is another thing, you can set hit count over here. The condition is when the breakpoint has to be hit. If I set the hit count equal to something like 5, now the breakpoint will only hit at the fifth count. So if I am going to run this application, now I can see index is 4, which means the breakpoint is hit at the fifth count. So that's how you can use condition and hit count for a breakpoint. Now let's see various debugging windows we have. The first window is breakpoints. It shows all the breakpoints that I have. I can set up a condition using right click from here. I can disable it. I can delete it. I can do all the stuff with the breakpoint from here, from this window. Then another one is call stack. The call stack shows me the sequence in which my breakpoint is hit. So now currently I'm on this line. And when I click on this, it will show me the previous line from which it has come. So from here, it has come to here. This is showing me the call stack. Now and then there is locals window. It shows me all the local variables present in this particular scope. Like for this method, we have index variable, i variable. So value for all the variables that are present in the current scope is shown over here. We need not to do anything. It will just show up over here. Then there is watch window. In this window, you can set a variable. Like if I set index, it will show its value. Also, you can set up a condition over here, like index equals to equals to three. Now, every time a line is executed, the value on the watch window is changed. So if I run the execution, you can see the values changing. So that's how you can keep a watch on the variable value while debugging the code. Then there's immediate window. You can run any code over here. You can create instance, you can set a variable value. Whatever you can do in code, you can do it over here. This is helpful when while executing some code, you need to set up a value or you need to set up a new variable. So requirement can be anything. 
So this window comes handy when we need to do something related to code. Like if I want to declare a variable. Now the variable has been created. It is showing me the value. It will also appear up in the locals. See, it is present over here. So that's how we can use immediate window. It can give us the value of a variable as well. Like if I type index variable, it will show its value over here. So you can do anything over here. There are other windows as well for debugging purpose. This is the list of all the windows that are present while debugging. You can explore it. The topic is very big. So you can explore yourself and you can come up with your doubts. As you are new at debugging, you can do various things using these debugging tools and help yourself removing that error which you want to. So that's all for now on debugging. You can visit our site cheesycode.com. We have an article related to this debugging where you can find out whatever I just said. Explore the debugging option in Visual Studio yourself. Do some random coding and debug it. If you come across any problem, do let us know. And if you like this video, please subscribe to our channel for more such videos. Thank you for watching.